Hey everybody, welcome back. So today is part two of a multi-part series on Mobius Lab by Amazing Noises. And so first I have to apologize to Amazing Noises because last time I said this app is an ApeSoft app and they are sister companies. So their apps actually look very similar. I mean, anybody who uses Ape Matrix, for example, will see the similarities here, but they are actually different companies. Um, so yeah, apologies once again. Now, uh, amazing noises, Mobius Lab. Okay, so today we're going to continue what we started last time. If you haven't watched that tutorial, I'd strongly recommend you go and watch it. Last time we looked at the input section. Uh, we looked at how you can use live input or samples. We looked at how you can use the synth. And I haven't talked about the synth yet. That is what I'm going to do in the next episode. We also looked briefly at the output section and most importantly, we started looking at some of the effects. So we did exciter, clamper and ringer. Now also last time I mentioned what is the difference between the effects in this middle row and the bottom row. That was that the middle row is time based and these ones are spectral effects. So again, if you're not sure what that is, it's worth checking that uh, last episode out. Now let's um, press play here briefly. Okay, so we have a preset here that I'm going that I made, um, and I'm going to use to look at the swarmer effect first. Let's click to open swarmer. First, I'm just going to play around a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to turn the volume down slightly. And I'm going to just put it back to its original state. Okay, and now I'm going to talk about what these knobs do. So activity changes the modulation rate. Depth is the amount of the chorus effect. So this swarmer is basically a chorus effect, right? So here it's wetter, here dry. This has more modulation, this has less. We can strengthen how noticeable that modulation is by increasing the feedback. Tank is a feedback knob. And then here we have a low pass filter. And you can see that it is moving because it's being controlled by the LFOs here. An LFO, I should say. Now, let me just briefly. Oh, let me turn this off first. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about this control manager in more detail. Last day, we only looked at, first of all, we only looked at the LFO aspect and we didn't look at it in detail. So we, we looked at the rate knob, for example, and we looked at the range, how we can set the range. But we didn't talk, for example, about different waveforms and what effects they have. And I think that this is something that most people don't go into in videos because they assume that a lot of people will know. But of course, if you're a beginner, you may not know. And I think it's very useful. So I'm just going to take a couple of minutes for the sake of any beginners who don't really know what these do to try and explain it in a very clear way. So we have these, uh, how many, seven different waveforms, okay? For example, sine wave, square wave, triangle, and so on. But what does this really mean, right? I mean, first we need to talk a little bit about what a waveform shows. So when we look at a waveform, what do we see? Well, we have the up and down axis, right? The Y axis, and we have left to right, the X axis. So we can think of it like this. Um, the Y axis shows a change in state. Um, it shows the amount of sound pressure. It shows how the sound pressure changes. 
and left to right shows how the sound pressure changes over time. So we, the, there's the shape of the waveform gives a lot of information about what the effect is going to do. For example, okay, let me press play again. Ah, I got to close this box first. Okay, that's low enough. Okay. For example, look how this moves when it's on the sign. When it is moving slowly from the beginning of the range to the end of the range, and then it moves back again. Let's get it a little bit faster. Okay, so we have a move from beginning to end and back again, and the move is gradual. Whereas if we see the square wave, what do we have here? We have a jump from, let's call it state A to state B. And that, so why is it a jump? Because if we look at the shape of the waveform, <clears throat> on the y-axis, the vertical line in the middle is completely straight. So that shows that there's no time involved in the change, at least theoretically. With the sine wave, we see a gradual change over time. The high peak takes time to change into the low trough. Okay, so the third waveform is a triangle. So we can see again, this is a gradual change. What's the difference from the sine wave? In the sine wave, it kind of lingers longer when it arrives at state A or B. But in the triangle, right, the triangle has this point. So it doesn't linger at either end of the range. It, gets, it go, travels there steadily, linearly. The sine wave is not linear. It travels in a linear movement, and it, when it arrives, it leaves again immediately. Okay, so the fourth waveform, this is a ramp, and we can see if we look at how it's moving that we have a gradual move and a jump back to the beginning. So gradual move from beginning to end, jumping back. And we can see that that's represented, right, in the way it looks. Okay, here we have the same, but it's opposite, opposite direction. Here, okay, maybe you can guess that this will have some similarity with the square wave, but it's a bit different because this one jumps like the square wave, but not from A to B and back again. It jumps around to random points in the range. Here we have also random movements, but they're not jumps. So we see all of that and how that is reflected here. So I thought that was something worth going into. Now, if we look back in the control manager where I'm wiggling the mouse here, here is where we reset the phase of the LFO. And if we do this one, this will reset the phase of all active LFOs, not just this one. Okay, now um, other things here, just to mention very briefly, this is where you set up MIDI. Uh, these two are for the accelerometer, so this one is left to right. So if you set this up, you can alter the LFO movement by moving your iPad or your phone around from left to right, tipping it on that axis. Uh, if we go over here, then this will be for up and down movement, backwards and forwards movement, not left and right. Okay, here, uh, this is related to the keyboard. Um, so the keyboard's, oh, keyboard is down here. It's tricky to um, press on that with a mouse with this iPad Pro screen. Okay, so here, you see when I scrub up and down on a key, I'm controlling how the LFO works. That would not be interesting for effects like this on a sample, but it would be good for when you're using the synth, right? Because you could um, move around on the keys while you're playing. Okay, so that's that. All right then, so that is Swarmer. 
Now here, okay, what do we have? This is one of my favorite FX apps. So this is Object by AAS. And this is a resonator. So let's have a little listen to what this is doing. So first I'm just gonna play with it and then I'm gonna explain. Why I put this in here is to show again one of the brilliant things about Mobius Lab that we can load other audio units in here. So we, we don't, we're not stuck to just using the effects in Mobius Lab. We can load other things. Now, one unfortunate thing is that at the moment, you cannot actually modify anything in here with the inbuilt LFOs in Mobius Lab. I think that's a pity. But I spoke to the developers and for various reasons, it just wasn't possible to implement that. Anyway, um, let's have a little listen to what this can do. It's not part of Mobius Lab, but I've kind of wanted to mention this effect for a while and haven't had a chance. And so this seems like a good opportunity. And there's not too much to go into here. It's not going to take very long. So let's have a listen. Okay. So, here we can change the type of object that we're modeling. Here we're changing how close it seems to us. Closer, further. Actually, no, this closer. <laughs> okay, here we have a kind of XY pad. So on the Y axis, we have decay. So we basically get more ringing sounds when we have higher values here. On the X axis, we have material type. Going over towards the right makes it more metallic sounding. Over here, it's got a kind of woodier quality. This is very important. This is the pitch. And here we change the brightness. And here the dry wet mix. Okay, so. Let me just put this preset back the way it was. Okay, so that's object. Now, brick wall and flutter, I'm going to look at using other presets. So let's go in and choose this one. Let me turn up the volume, let you hear it. Now let me talk about what it does. First, I'm going to turn off the LFOs by going in here and selecting off. Okay. So this is called a brick wall filter. Basically, we can cut out some of the sound spectrum. Here we set the range. So this is the range of what will be affected by the brick wall filter. So let's say at the moment, low frequency is 2.36 kilohertz. And over here, the high frequency 
is 22.05 kilohertz. When this is in band pass mode, it will preserve the sounds inside this range. When we switch it to reject mode, it will preserve the sounds outside this range and it will cut the sounds within this range. So let's have a listen. So as I lower the low frequency, because it's on bandpass mode, we've got more of the frequency retained and there's only a small amount that's being cut. But as I increase this, you see now, we've got silence. But if I go to reject, then it's going to cut out the, the range outside these parameters. Right, so that's how the brick wall filter works. Okay, now let's look at... What are we looking at here? Let's see. Flutter. Let's do flutter. Well, I'm not used to using a mouse. <laughs> okay. Let's look at swasher. Close the brick wall one and click once to open up the parameters for flutter. So you can see this is being uh, modulated. Unfortunately, double click does not work to open up the control manager for these. I think that's a bug and I've informed the developers. What we do in that case is we go up here to the main control manager. And this is the great thing, it has a search box, because, you know, there are hundreds of different parameters that are exposed here. And they're not alphabetical, but it doesn't matter, because what we do is we just go type here, flutter. And then you can see, even we have the LFO symbol here, which means that flutter is assigned to an LFO. So, we can go in here and turn that off. It's a little bit time consuming, but hopefully that'll get fixed. Now, let me just play around with this a little bit first. put it back the way it was. Turn it down. I'll actually turn it off for a second. So, flutter is also a kind of brick wall effect, but it is animated. So, Again, it's a spectral effect, this one, right? So we're dealing with the um, frequency spectrum. And what we do is we set an upper frequency limit, 22 kilohertz in this case, and a lower frequency li limit, uh, zero. And the effect will apply to this range if the spectral balance is zero. Okay, if we change the spectral balance to 1, then the effect will apply to the frequencies outside this range. LFO bands, that controls the number of cycles of the LFO. So here we get more of a kind of cycling effect. Let me play that for you again. Uh, let's just go here. Listen to the fluttery quality of the sound. It's much more fluttery. Right? 
residual gain controls the volume of the parts of the frequency range that are not being affected by this effect. Stereo flip gives different processing of the left and right sides. Okay, so that's flutter. Now, what have we got? Let's take a look at this one. I'm going to turn off the grader and reductor here. Not really need to. I'm going to talk about those separately. Now, let me just turn a few of these on and off to you here. Okay, this is the dry one. Now, the swarm are already familiar. That's giving it a nice body and some movement. Shifter is doing pitch shifting. Filter, that's enough, I think. This brings in some reversing effects. So, let's just look first at the pitch shifter. First, I'm just gonna play with it a little bit and you can hear what it's doing. By the way, one cool thing is we can change the speed that we can do things here. So now I'm allowed, now I'm able to do really fast changes. If I, if I change it down here, then any movements I make are going to be painfully slow, but you've got a lot of control. Let's just set it somewhere. and let's talk about what's happening. So once again, we have a split frequency thing going on. So the frequency that we have here is 88.44 Hertz, okay. And then we have shift one and shift two. So what this means is that shift one will apply pitch shifting to the frequencies below 88.44 Hertz. And shift two, will apply pitch shifting to the frequencies above 88.44 Hertz, right? So we have two different pitch shifters going on at the same time. The stereo flip, again, right? Don't forget you can check things in here. Okay, look, stereo flip, when this switch is on, the right channel shift parameters are inverted. So shift two for the lower frequencies and shift one for the higher. Because if you remember normally, um, shift one should be for the lower, this should be for the higher. But if we do stereo flip, then this one will affect the frequencies above 88. This one will affect the frequencies below. I love this. Okay, so... That's the shifter element. I'm gonna just put things back the way they were. And I'm gonna take off the degrader and reductor. Okay, filter. Ah. Remember, one tap to select, two taps to turn on and off. Let me just play around with it a little bit and then I'll talk about it.
Okay. So, once again, just put everything back the way it was. So, filter. First thing to notice, we have these two radio buttons over on the right, where we can switch between filter, filter types. So dub and morph. Okay. So let's look at the dub one first. With this one, we have the dub pad, which is like an X, Y, and we can see the cutoff and overlap are being affected by this, right? Okay, so here we select the cutoff frequency for the filter. Um, overlap. Mm, hang on a second. Let's talk about more first, actually. Okay, so here we set the frequency. Again, same as with the dub one. But here we choose between type. Now, we can see here, this goes from not to one. When it's here, it's a low pass filter. Up here, we're getting a band pass filter. And here we've got a high pass filter. Right. Here we change the resonance. So the resonance um, adds amplitude to the frequencies around the cutoff frequency point. Order changes how, changes the slope of the filter. So here basically we have a shallower slope. If you think about, you know, this is kind of like a gentle hill. And here it's more like a steep mountain. So with this, we get more extreme filtering effects because we've got a smaller band for the resonance to act on. You can notice it more. Okay, envelope depth and envelope speed. When we increase envelope depth, louder sounds will have an increase in the culture, in the filter frequency cutoff. So basically we will notice more of a filter effect on the louder sounds. And envelope speed will change how quickly we notice those sounds. So with a low value here, the filter effect will come in very quickly, right? It will have a very short attack. If we put this up higher, it will have a little bit of a lag. Now you really need to hear that. So again, let me just put it back. And let's just play around with the envelope depth and the speed. You can hear the louder sounds have more filter on them. Here, it's, the filter action is noticeable right at the start of the loud sounds. And here it comes in a bit later. So this is the more aggressive setting. Okay. Dub. All right, so here we have from minus 100, to zero is a low pass filter. And then we have a high pass filter. As we, so all of this is low pass. As we increase it, the cutoff frequency increases. All of this is high pass. As we keep going further over here, the cutoff frequency increases. Now here we have this overlap if we put the overlap fully up and we put this in the middle, then we have a band pass filter. Let's just have a listen to that. OK, 
Okay, if overlap is zero, everything here is just pure low pass. Everything here is pure high pass. If we put this fully up, we start to get overlap between the filters. We have several filters acting at the same time. And obviously we can apply less of that. And all the other things are the same. Okay. Reverso. Have a listen. Turn off stereo flip. Notice the difference that inertia makes. Okay, so let's talk about it. So, here we set a time value for the effect. So here I have set it to one bar. Now, what will happen is that, okay, if we put reverse probability up to 100, in every bar, the first two beats will move in the forwards direction, and the last two beats will be reversed. So it halves the value here, and it doesn't affect the first half, but it reverses the second half. So we can change the probability that the reverse effect will happen. So if we have it here, there's not going to be no reversing. Here, we will consistently have the second half of the bar being reversed. And then here, we will have more or less random possibility of that reversing happening. So inertia changes the sound that occurs when we change the switch rate. Let's listen again. Here, the changes are basically happening instantaneously. When we add inertia, there's a delay and it causes interesting sound effects. It's like when you manually reverse a record, right? Stereo flip will give us different stuff going on in left ear and right ear. Okay, so that's reverse. So, right. So I'm going to call it a day for there, and we'll continue this in the next installment. I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. Actually. There's a free code going for this. You'll see the details in the comments section. So yeah, just give, give this a like and give it a comment and subscribe if you haven't already to be in with a chance of winning a free code for this. Very kindly provided by Amazing Noises, not Apesoft. Okay, thanks a lot, everybody. I hope this was useful for you. Cheers, see you next time.